Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you are all having a great time. So in today's session, we are going to talk about uh, another mediator in WSO2, which is for each mediator. So in any programming uh, language, we'll have uh, certain functions that help us to perform repeated tasks, right? So usually we call them as loops. So in WSO2, uh, there's one particular mediator that helps us to do or perform such tasks and that's for each mediator. So it's basically this mediator will help us to loop through the repeating tags of an XML or a JSON and then perform certain transformations uh, as needed, right? But at the crux, for each mediator helps us in looping through uh, the repeated elements, right? Now, for the purpose of this demo, I'm using this uh, XML message as my request. As you can see, uh, I have a create a customer request uh, root as a root tag, and then I have a child tag customers. And then inside customers, uh, there is a tag customer which is repeating, right? Each customer, each instance of customer represents a particular customer. And you can see the first name and last name tags inside, right? So we are going to loop through the customer, which is a repeating, uh, repeating tag, and then perform certain action on that. Now, after the transformation, this is my expected response. So the structure remains more or less the same, but if you notice the full name, then we have a new new tag called full name. Let me take the highlighter. Okay, see, we have a new tag called full name that replaced first name and last name with full name. And then basically I'm concatenating the first and last name. Okay, but again, we have to loop through the repeating instances of the customer and perform this. And let's see how for each mediator comes handy in, in the scenario. So I'm in the integration studio now. So to start with, I'm going to create a Maven multi-module project. Okay. So just type Maven and then you'll find a Maven multi-module project here. The usual naming convention that I follow is sample. So it's uh, sample 12 by now. So I'm just naming my project as a sample 12. Click on finish. Once you're done with that, next step is to create an ESB project. So click on the Maven multi-module project that you have just created, and then click on the ESB config project, right? Click on next, and then name your ESB project as sample 12 underscore ESB. Click on next, and then select the parent which is a sample 12 uh, multi-module project that we have created. Okay, click on finish. Now, as you can see, the structure of the project is ready. I come down to the APIs. This is where we are gonna create the API. So right click uh, on the API folder, click on new, then rest API, create a new API artifact, name your API as sample 12 underscore API underscore one. And the context, let's be very simple. Let's give us as, as follow. Now you can leave the version as version type as none. Click on finish. Now this would create a structure of your API. Now you have an API with a, a single resource, right? So if you click on the API, you can see the name of the API that you gave and the context here, right? If you click on the resource, you have the option to select the different types of protocols it can support and the different methods. So in this case, I'm going to post some data. So I don't need get, instead I'm going to select post. Once that is done, now it's time to configure the different mediators, okay? So we are going very simple. So first I'm going to select a 4 each mediator. So scroll down and select the 4 each mediator. Place it here. So as I explained before, what I'm going to do is a simple transformation. I'm going to uh, concatenate values from two different tags into one. So uh, the value from the first name and last name separated with a space. That's what I'm going to do. So I would need a, a payload factory to do that. So let me place that as well. And finally, a response mediator, response mediator to send the response back to the consumer. Okay. Now it's time to configure the mediators. Okay. Click on the for each mediator, and here you can find three properties. Right? For each ID is like an identifier for a particular for each mediator instance. Now, 
Um, this, uh, if your integration flow has only one instance of 4 each mediator, this is not really um, helpful. Uh, and also, additionally, it is, a, it is an optional parameter. So if you wish, you can skip it. But if you have a nested loop scenarios, which means you have one for each mediator within uh, another for each mediator, then this will become really handy. Okay. So in, in our case, I just have one instance of it. So I'm just going to name this ITR1, um, though I'm not going to use it. Now here comes the expression. This expression is on this side. From there, we should actually loop, right? So in, in the for each expression, we have to uh, give the X path of the repeating field. So in our case, the repeating field is customer, right? So we have to give the X path of customer. So we, we had a root tag create customer equals root and customers and customer. So the looping will start from here, okay? So that's all the configuration of for each mediator. Now, if you want the entire um, set of operations that you want to perform within a for each mediator, and if you want to bundle that within a sequence, you can pretty much do so. So by creating a uh, sequence and then giving a reference to it. In my case, I'm going to define it directly here inside the for each mediator. So I'm just naming it as anonymous, right? So now our loop is ready and uh, we have configured the for each mediator to start the looping from customer, which is a repeating feed. Now, when it comes to payload factory, what I would want to do is I want to concat concatenate the value of two fields, which is a first name and last name, and then represent it in the output as full name, right? So this is how my output would look like, not the complete output, but after the payload factory mediator. Okay, now we have to give, we have to replace the dollar one with a value, right? So for that, come down and then click on the plus sign here, add a new element. And here you can define the expression. So basically we are going to define the concatenate expression here. So select the argument type as expression and then click on the argument expression. And in here you can write then concat and then what we're going to concatenate is the first name and last name. So just type first name and comma space and I'm just concatenating with a space and then here goes the last name. Okay, so this is the concatenate expression to concatenate the first and last name. Click on OK and finish. Now we have done with the payload factory and this is, yeah, that's it. We are pretty much done with our configurations. Save your API. Now the next step is to create a composite application project to deploy and test our API. So for that, click on the Maven multimodal project, click on new, other, and then type composite. We get a composite application project. Name it as sample 12 underscore car. Select the dependency as a ESB project. Click on next. Select the parent, which is sample 12, which is our even multimodal project. Click on finish. Now we have the car file that includes our API. Now click on the car file to deploy it. Basically, click on the car file, right click, and say run as run on micro integrator, or if you have an instance of the WSO2. EI running, you can run on that, or I'm just running, I'm going to run it on the micro integrator. Click on OK and finish. If you switch to the console tab, you can see the deployment happening here. You can see the deployment has uh, completed successfully. You can see the successfully deployed carbon application sample to our underscore car uh, printer in the logs. So now we are good to test our flow. Switch to Postman to validate the flow. I'm in Postman now. So the URL of our API would be um, something like this, slash for loop, because that was the context that we gave. And uh, the micro integrator is running on 8290. And hence, this is the URL. And we don't have any HTTPS enabled here, so it's simple HTTP. And the method is post, right? Now I've pasted the request XML, which uh, I had uh, shown in, the, uh, in the, the beginning of the video. So I have two instances of customer having two customer names, John and Honai, and the second one is Ramji Rao, right? Now let's see how the output comes. Click on the send. As you can see in the response, um, we have concatenated the value of the first name and last name, and it's appearing as full name. 
But what is more important is the looping. See, we had two instances of the customer here. Now we have successfully looped through and um, got the output. Now, just to validate uh, the looping happening properly, I'm just copy pasting the same customer instances again and again. So now I have six instances of customer here. Let's see how it works. When I click on send, see the response we have looped through and the looping is working perfectly fine. So that's all about the for each mediator. It's a very simple mediator, but it's really handy when it comes to handling large uh, XML or JSON payloads. So in case if you have any queries, please feel free to reach out to me through the comment section. And if you like the contents being published in my channel, please do subscribe. Uh, also, please do enable the notification button so that as and when I publish a new video, it will reach to you automatically. Thank you again for watching. Happy learning.